Tell the Lord, I'm just excited to be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. Well, beloved, I bid you welcome. Welcome to St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church, the home church of Rosa Parks. So excited that on this fifth Sunday, we will have our song service. And we have Sister Gabrielle Buffer, who will be our worship leader this morning. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, from whom all today will be from Psalms chapter 33 verse 1 through 5. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord with the hearts. 
Make melodies to him with the instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song, play skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Now we will have a special dance by Phoebe and Naomi Hardy, and after that, a piano selection by Ryla Mark. Amen. 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 Let's say praise the Lord. Come on. They're going to do a good job. We're just having some technical difficulty. <laughs>
says yes, nobody can say no. Amen. Now we're ready for Mr. Ryland Martin at the piano. Amen. Let's give him a hand.
We will now have Miss Brianna Ram to read the scripture, Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 10. Romans 13, chapter, I mean, chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you should not commit adultery. You should not murder. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. You should not covet. And if there's any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love, you should love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not harm to a neighbor. Their love is a fulfillment of the law. The glory part. Glory be to the Father.
tell my story. This is my song. Praise my Praise my Savior. All the day long. This is my story. This is my song. This is my story. Amen. This is my song. Praising my Savior. The one who died for me. The one who shed blood for me. The one who walks with me. The one who talks with me the one who fights my battles praising my savior praising my savior even when i don't feel like it i gotta press my way uh, to praise my savior because the word of god says that uh, god inhabits the praises of his people and i don't know about you but sometimes uh, i need the lord to be in the middle of what i'm going through uh, i need god to come and take complete control uh, so i praise him and i magnify his name uh, for he is indeed worthy of all the praise praising my savior all this is my soul. Thank you, God. Praise in my soul. All the day long. Oh, this is my soul. Hallelujah. I want to praise God, amen, for the leadership of Sister Tabitha Pack and leading our fifth Sunday song service and service of arts, amen, showcasing our young people, amen. Come on, put your hands together, amen. As well as our young at heart, come on, put your hands together, amen. Just want to say thank you all so much for your prayers and grateful for those who did intercede on last week. Jamel was an uh, ordained and itinerant elder, amen, in the amen. African Methodist Episcopal Church. So indeed, we are grateful for that, amen. And want to thank um, everybody, amen, for just carrying on in such a spirit of excellence. A shout out to Reverend Pamela Higgins, amen, for not only ministering the word on last week, but also teaching Bible study on 
Wednesday. Amen. So very blessed to have very capable people. Amen. See, when you're blessed and you know it, you better let folk know they are, you appreciate them. Amen. Some folk leave and they'll be nervous the whole time. Amen. Amen. But beloved, we're picking up where we left off on the third Sunday. Still talking about putting on the whole armor of God. So beloved, Ephesians chapter 6, lifting up one verse, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. And it reads, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And for a little while, I want us to reflect on this thought. Faith is your shield. Faith is your shield. Shall we bow? Shall we pray? Once again, God, I stand behind this sacred desk realizing, God, that I need a special touch and a special anointing for you. God, people have pressed their way into the sanctuary, God. They need a word from heaven, Father God, to continue to press and persevere in this life's journey. So come, Holy Ghost, come with your quickening power, because it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. God, have you move in this service. We will exalt and glorify your name. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And the people of God said, amen. Beloved, faith is your shield. Every day. Every day, it appears that someone that we love that someone is under fire or under attack. October is Breast Cancer and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And if the truth be told, both are wreaking havoc in our community. Numbers, numbers rise with every report and it looks and it feels like we are losing. Losing the fight, losing those we love, losing our elders. I'm talking about those who will educate and mold and shape the rest of us. I hear you, Pastor. It's hard out here. Yes, beloved, it's hard. And I, I hear you when you say, what do we do when it feels like we are constantly under attack and we can barely survive? I'm talking about things like temptation, fear, oppression, doubt, despair, discouragement, worry, in addition to the stuff that we have no control over that causes us to want to give up. Beloved, how do we respond? Well, the apostle Paul, uh, he was acquainted uh, with hard times. Paul knows what it means to struggle. Paul experienced life struggles in a real up close and personal way. And as believers of the faith, we are not immune. The enemy seeks to attack us and frustrate our faith. And he's preying on our youth and he's confusing not just their minds, but he's confusing our minds as well. And he's doing everything to try to steal our joy. He's deceiving. He's blinding. He's wreaking havoc. But I told you, you know how to fight. Not a physical fight, but what a spiritual fight. Paul knows that the struggle for the Christian believer, it is what? Spiritual. And he reminds the people of Ephesus how to live in a what? Corrupt 
society. In other words, how to survive one attack after the other and how to have the joy of Jesus in the midst of it all. Paul. Paul says, therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the battle truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the peace of the gospel. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. We have been delving in this pericope the whole month of October. And remember, Paul is using an allegory. In other words, Paul, through words, is painting a picture of a Roman soldier's basic equipment. Paul is trying to show how the believer's equipment works together as we strive to serve God and live a victorious life. If you stay with me, I promise you're going to be going somewhere. Amen. So over the last few weeks, we were reminded to stand your ground because you know how to fight. Then we said, check the facts for Satan is what the father of lies. Then we said, lace up your gospel shoes and keep your feet moving, uh, that you got to move with the gospel of peace and put Satan under your feet. Uh, but you got to keep moving forward because you got to step out uh, and you got to step on. Well, in our sermonic text today, the apostle Paul, he tells us in this passage to, to take up our shields, which is called the shield of faith. So what is Paul saying? Paul is saying that faith is our front line defense when we are up under attack. Paul didn't say that when you're up under attack, you, your go-to is to clap back. No, he said it is your faith, that your faith is your front line of defense. So in your Holy Ghost imagination, I need you to see a tangible picture of a shield. I need you to see a tangible picture of a metal barrier. Uh, I need you to see uh, a shield that is large enough uh, to cover all of the other armor, and yet it allows the soldier to stand behind the metal barrier, and he's what? Fully protected. He's protected because it is a barrier between you and the enemy. In other words, faith is your metal barrier. Faith is your guard. Faith is your shield. Faith. Faith is where your confidence lies. Self-confidence has its place. And I need my young people to be self-confident. I need for you to believe in yourself. I need for you to be self-assured. But I don't need for you to be arrogant. And I don't need for you to be cocky. But I need for you to be confident. Because your self-confidence should never override or underestimate your confidence and your trust in a holy God. In a spiritual battle, don't you know that people will attack your worth? That people, uh, they will shred your reputation. That people will try to demoralize your hope uh, by attacking your self-confidence. Uh, that's why you got to put your confidence in Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of your faith. Uh, you got to put your confidence in Jesus uh, and what Jesus has already achieved uh, on the cross at Calvary. 
faith. Faith is your shield. In his blog, Art Thomas, I'm quoting him. He suggests that faith is a relational word, whereas belief is an intellectual word. I'm going to break it down in a minute, but I need for you to get that, that, that faith uh, is a relational, how you relate to a person, whereas belief is an intellectual word. In other words, faith uh, refers to our trust in a person, uh, while belief refers to our embracing of information. Uh, are you with me yet? Yeah, in other words, belief looks for logic whether or not it makes sense. Somebody say, what are you trying to say here? Because I am in relationship with Jesus. And because I trust Jesus, then I have faith in Jesus. However, there are too many people, uh, they have information about Jesus. They have a belief about Jesus. And that perhaps he walked on this earth, uh, but they are not in relationship uh, with God through Jesus. Uh, and therefore, they don't trust Jesus uh, as their Savior. So in short, they just got information. They have information, but they don't have what? Faith. And beloved, it's not a matter of believing the right information about Jesus. It's a matter of trusting Jesus. Because the hymn writer said, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the say of the Lord. I'm so glad I learned to Trust him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that he is with me, will be with me. Come on, y'all, to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace, hey, to trust him more. Beloved, I know that uh, we're living in an information age. And you can Google this and you can Google that. But too much of disinformation will leave you baffled and will leave you confused. However much faith can leave you healed and can leave you whole. Because faith is your shield. In addition, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Well, beloved, uh, I just want to leave you with three quick, three quick life lessons from this single verse 16. Number one, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Uh, uh, Paul says all. He didn't say some. He said all. Paul says all uh, because too often uh, we regulate God uh, to certain areas of our life uh, because we think that we big and bad enough to handle the rest. In other words, Lord, I, I can trust you with my children, but I can't trust you with my spouse. Uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, I heard, uh, uh, Lord, uh, I can trust you with my health, but I can't trust you with my wealth. Beloved, God wants uh, to be God in all the circumstances of our life. When we have not surrendered all, then don't you know that Satan uses a weapon of discontent to disrupt our lives? But can I tell you that Paul, he gives us an antidote for being discontent. Paul says that I know both to have a little 
and I know how to have a lot. Paul says in any and all circumstances, uh, I have learned the secret of being content, uh, whether well fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. Paul says, I'm able to do what all things. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in all circumstances. Take up the shield of faith. That was number one. Number two, we need a shield of faith formation. I'm going to say that again so uh, you can work with me uh, when I try to paint the picture. We need a shield of faith formation. Amen. Beloved, remember a shield will allow you to advance against the enemy even when under attack, even when being bombarded with what? Flaming arrows because you got a shield that's protecting you from almost head. Come on, y'all, to toe. But too often, the enemy wants you what? Vulnerable. The enemy wants you alone. The enemy wants you isolated. But the Roman soldiers, they would align their shields to form a packed uh, testudo formation. I had to Google to learn how to even pronounce the word. I, I hope I got it right. Uh, testudo, come on, y'all, formation. Uh, in other words, uh, they would line up, y'all, uh, side, uh, by, by, by side. Uh, uh, just stand with me right here. Uh, come on, Brianna, right here, right here. Come on, Holy Ghost, work this uh, example. Uh, uh, come on, Gabrielle, right here. Uh, in other words, uh, the Roman soldiers, uh, they would what, stand side uh, by side and they would be covered with their shields across the front. And then uh, those in the choir, I just need just about three of them to stand. And those in the choir, uh, they would be lined up, come on y'all, uh, side by side. And when they had their shield, uh, they would raise their shield uh, to cover uh, the top uh, of their head. Uh, oh, you still not with me. Uh, I put you, I sent you all a picture. I guess they are not gonna put it up. Uh, but what's my point? Uh, that in life, uh, especially when you're going through, uh, you need a shield uh, of faith formation. You need to surround yourself with other believers to put up their what? Shield of faith. And as the soldiers in the army of the Lord, you will form a pact to studio faith formation. A testudo faith formation why do you need people uh, uh, to, 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 to have faith with you because guess what they're going to trust God uh, with you they're going to pray to God to, with you. They're going to have faith uh, with you. In other words, we're going to advance against the enemy uh, together uh, because I need you and you need me. And we're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. Body. So, beloved, you need a shield of faith formation. Number three, final point extinguish uh, flaming arrows of the evil one. Uh huh. You see, uh, uh, our chaplain uh, Dixon, uh, ancient soldiers would often dip their arrows in some kind of flammable liquid. At least that's what my research says. And then they would light the arrow that they dipped in the flaming liquid. They would light it on fire. 
And then they will fire the arrow like it was a missile. So in ancient warfare, these fiery arrows were launched in great number at the beginning of the attack. So when the attacks start, one after the other would just be coming at you. And the idea was not only did they want to injure the enemy, but they wanted to shoot at him at all sides with a massive number of arrows so they could confuse the enemy. In other words, they wanted to create a panic. But Paul says that this is Satan's strategy with us as well that our enemy will shoot flaming arrows one after the other at us at every opportunity. Why? Because our enemy wants to weaken us. Amen. Our enemy wants us to feel that we're hard pressed on every side. Our sisters, our sisters don't have readily access to health care or health insurance. And therefore, they have what? Infrequent mammograms. The breast cancer, by the time they detect it, it's often in what? Advanced stages. That's a flaming arrow. Brothers, male breast cancer is rare, but nonetheless, guess what? It's very real. And that's why the brothers need to get checked. That's a flaming arrow. What happens in this house? stays in this house. This conditioning of the mind prevents us from seeking help when domestic violence impact our family and our community. That is a flaming error. Yeah. Brothers, brothers are often reluctant to report abuse because they feel embarrassed. They fear that people won't believe them. But can I tell you that abuse is not limited to folk going upside your head because emotional and verbal abuse is just as damaging. That is a flaming arrow. Come on, Sam. When a relatively insignificant thing get blown out of proportion that is a flaming error so beloved we gotta pray in faith we gotta believe in faith we gotta act in faith we gotta walk in faith we gotta fast in faith you even got to receive in faith even before the manifestation because faith is your shield. Amen. Now, I know that sometimes we get weary. And I know that sometimes we get weak. But I'm here to remind you this morning that great strength comes from faith in God. That faith is your shield. That faith is what will protect us when the flaming arrows are coming at us fast, one after the other. That faith is what will help us advance even when we're under attack. Some of y'all under attack and you just paralyzed and Satan have, right, have you right where he wants you up, but you need the shield of faith because even though the arrows are coming, you still can advance. You still can move when God says move. Faith is what will help us survive the attacks that are coming at us. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes, come on, by the word of God and you need to let the word of God hit your heart heart and hit your head. Faith. Faith is your shield. When you're tempted to doubt, disbelieve, or drift, faith is the solution. I hear you. Somebody say, why? Why have faith? Because unbelief is the basis for seeing. Faith. Faith does not make things easy. Faith. Faith makes things possible. Faith, faith in a God that can do anything, what? But fail. Faith is your shield. Faith in a God that specializes 
in the impossible. Faith uh, is your shield. Faith uh, in a God that when the doctors uh, have given up, uh, God still uh, has the final say uh, because faith uh, is your shield. Faith uh, in a God that specializes uh, in the healing business uh, because faith uh, is your shield. Don't you know that in God, he still declares yes. He he still says amen because faith is your shield. I'm talking about a God that will never leave you, that will never forsake you. Faith is your shield. I'm talking about a God that will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Faith is your shield. Faith, it doesn't make it easy. Faith, it doesn't make it easy. Faith, it doesn't make it easy. But faith makes it possible. Because have you in the rivers that seem uncrossable? And have you in the mountains that you cannot tunnel through? But don't you know that God, he specializes. God, he specializes. God, he specializes. And he can do what no other power Holy Ghost power, no other power, Holy Ghost power, he can do what no other power, Holy Ghost power can do. Faith, faith, come on, Tad, however the Lord leads you, faith is your shield. Come on, Jesus. I said, God specializes. God specializes. I said, God specializes. God specializes. God specializes. I said, God Shut up! Oh, God! Say. 
perhaps there's one that have never experienced this power. That have never experienced this Holy Ghost power. A power that can do what no other power can do. And beloved, the only way that you can receive this power is that you got to acknowledge and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Beloved, I invite you to stand all over the congregation and stand where you are. Because in times like these, we need to bombard heaven. You need to put in the atmosphere because you know somebody that needs salvation. You know somebody that needs Jesus. You know somebody that needs this Holy Ghost power. Come on, in the spirit realm, put that name in the atmosphere right now. Come on, call her name in the atmosphere. Come on. The door of the church is open. Why don't you direct the message us? Why don't you call us? And we will come in agreement with you. Pick up the phone, 334 286. Come on, we need to hear from you. Holy Ghost, power can do. Come on, we need to hear from you. Come on, you all can sing well. Come on, special. Direct message us. Pick up the phone and call us. 334-286-8577. If you're looking for a church home, we offer you St. Paul. Come on, God specializes. We're going to bless our giving. So, beloved, what time is it? It's giving time. Come on, beloved, what time is it? It's giving, it's giving time. time. It's time for the ministry of giving. I invite you to read our giving verse together. God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them, and they will give thanks to God. Beloved, we invite you to prepare your offering. If you would like to give online, we support Cash App, which is dollar sign ST. P-A-U-L-M-G-M. -M. We also support PayPal and Givelify. All three of those modes do require a service fee. However, if your bank supports Zelle, we encourage you to give via Zelle because there is no fee. Or you can mail your offering in to 706 East Patton Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama, 36111. Or you can drop it off. We have a locked mailbox behind the church. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. And of thine own. special blessing upon this offering that God that you will multiply seeds that have been sown God you know the sacrifice that people are giving in order to sow into the kingdom and so God I ask you to multiply the seed back onto them 
some tenfold, some a hundredfold, some even a thousandfold. By having you blessed, God, we will exalt and magnify your name. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to sit at this time. We will now have our announcements. Amen. Good morning, St. Paul family. My name is Brittany Martin, and these are our church announcements. Firstly, our annual Family Fall Festival will be today after service at 1130. Please stick around for a lot of candy, food, games, music, crafts, and a lot of family fun. Midterm elections are fastly approaching. They will be November the 8th. If you would like to get involved, or if you need a ride to the polls, or if you'd like to be a potential driver, please see Sister Mary Salem or Sister Lucille Perkins. Bible study will be this Wednesday, both in person and via Zoom. We've also began our tutoring services for our young scholars. Dinner will be served at 6 o'clock p.m., and both Bible study and tutoring will begin at 6.30. Our St. Paul's Senior Nutrition Program is open from Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. We need all input to make sure that this program is a success and a blessing. This is available to seniors 60 and older, so if you have any information or if you need any information, please call the front office. There will be a breast cancer awareness table outside in the foyer. Please stop by and see any member of the health ministry for all information. Our fifth annual Rosa Parks Day celebration will be scheduled for December the 1st. Our Unity Walk will begin at 5.30 p.m. And we're so blessed to have Mr. Brian Stevenson as our closing convocation guest speaker at 7 o'clock p.m. The Souvenir Journal team would like all family and friends to participate by purchasing a $25 Friends of St. Paul acknowledgement, which entitled their name to be included in the Souvenir Journal. Please see Sister Jackie Jones or Sister Brenda Smith for more information. The Rosa Parks essay competition is also underway. This is open to grades three through 12 and monetary prizes are awarded to the winners. For more information, please see our St. Paul website or scan the QR code on our flyer or contact Sister Ann Clemens. Attention Alabama State University alumni and music lovers. The Alabama State University Choir will be performing here at St. Paul on Sunday, November the 6th at 5 p.m. This is a fundraiser for the choirs to travel to Carnegie Hall in New York City. Please come out and support this worthy cause. Lastly, please keep all of our sequence shed in and our church family in your prayers. Please join our 12 noon prayer call. The teleconference information is located both on our Facebook page and on our St. Paul website. Have a good day, have a good week, and please govern yourselves accordingly. And the people of God said amen. amen, and the people of God said amen again. Just real quickly, just want to bring one other announcement to your attention, that on Sunday, November the 13th at 2 o'clock p.m., we'll be, we'll be celebrating uh, Reverend Dr. Kathy Bruce at Gaines Chapel in Sardis, Alabama. It will be her pastor's appreciation. Yours truly will be preaching, amen, and St. Paul will be providing the ministry of music. So I'm asking you to please, come on, let's travel as a church family to Sardis, Alabama, amen. 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 I believe that's all that's left. I will ask you to stand. I intentionally am asking that we acknowledge our faith in this season. Amen. Because we just need to be reminded. Let us, amen, uh, recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. you that immediately after worship please let's go to the fellowship hall and just uh fellowship as a family amen we are having our fall festival and even though the weather may be inclement outside we are planning a holy ghost good time on the inside amen amen, amen. so don't rush off to the buffet we got some snacks for you amen amen, amen. but let me receive the blessing faith is your shield Beloved, faith is your shield. Faith is your shield. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord allow his face, his countenance, his favor to shine upon each and every one of you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you his peace his peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore, and the people of God song. Amen. Amen. Once again, please come to the fellowship hall immediately following worship. 